the ocean is a dangerous place. You got rogue waves, you got pirates, you got uh, Cthulhu. So it might surprise you to hear that in 2023, over 30 million people willingly chose to go on a cruise. Personally, I can't imagine anything more horrific than being stuck in the middle of the ocean with thousands of potential serial killers. Not to mention, the cruise industry is fucking horrible. Disease, tax evasion, exploitation of workers, pollution, murder, the list goes on. But we're not talking about any of that stuff today. We're talking about one specific incident that will make you reconsider ever getting on a cruise ship again. An incident that's come to be known as the poop cruise. The poop cruise. Poop cruise. Poop cruise. Poop cruise. 4,200 passengers on board ended up stranded at sea, spending six days crapping into a plastic bag. There's no light, no water. Uh, we can't flush. And there's and pits on the floors. Many passengers used red plastic bags as toilets. Human waste was actually piling up. Hundreds slept in hallways or topside to escape the foul and stagnant air below deck. It's February 7th, 2013. You're on the Carnival Triumph, one of the finest damn cruise vessels to sail the seven seas with its state-of-the-art restaurants, world-class entertainment, and who could forget, flushing toilets. You're in for the time of your life. After two days of smooth sailing, you arrive to the beautiful city of Cozumel, Mexico, where you spend the day shopping, sipping pina coladas on the beach, and trying not to think about the crippling third world poverty right outside the resort. Around 6 p.m., you get back to the boat. You hit the buffet and stuff your fat face so much that you can barely breathe. Then, you decide to check out the cruise comedian. Huevos Rancheros. <laughs> Pico de Cayo. Uh, all right, that was a bad idea. But the night is still young. So you head over to the Lido deck where the DJ plays Gangnam Style on repeat 27 times in a row. But you don't mind. God, what a great song. After having more than a few cocktails, you hit the buffet one last time before stumbling back to your room and finally getting in bed. Time for some well-deserved rest before hitting the breakfast buffet in the morning. But just as you finally drift off, your sleep is interrupted by the sound of Alpha Team is code for fire. This sound was blasting throughout the entire ship at 5.27 a.m. But let's back up a bit. Just 15 minutes earlier, the ship's engineer heard an alarm go off in the engine room. He immediately went to check it out, and to his horror, he saw that one of the diesel generators was spraying fuel all over the place. If he didn't act fast, the whole ship would go up in flames. He had to make it to the other side of the engine room to shut off the generator manually. Only one problem. The engine room was now flooded with gas up to his ankles. One wrong move, and he would be burnt to a crisp. He carefully started making his way to the control panel and BOOM! The diesel ignited and the engineer was incinerated. I'm kidding, he was fine. The fuel did ignite, but he was able to make it out on time. But now, there was a small issue of a massive fire in the engine room. That's when the Alpha Team message went out to the rest of the ship. Smoke was starting to fill up the lower decks, and thick clouds were spewing out of the ship's tail on the top deck. People were unsurprisingly freaking the fuck out. Many of them put on their life jackets and gathered near the lifeboats. Having a widespread panic on a ship is never a good thing, so the captain told everyone to stay calm and that everything was under control. We are really sorry about the, the way it have gone so early, but everything is under control. No one could understand what the hell he was saying because of his Italian accent, which also reminded them of the Costa Concordia accident from last year. Now everyone was freaking out even more. But then the cruise director, Jen, assured everyone that the situation was being handled and everything was going to be okay. Everything is completely under control, so please folks, there's no point waiting in the muscle station to go back to your cabin, go back to bed, go and have some coffee, have some breakfast. This calmed people down, but things were pretty fucking far from okay. The fire was still raging in the engine room, so the captain gave the order to activate the CO2 cooling system, which quickly put out the fire. There we go. Captain Luigi saved the day, but just as he was getting ready to head back to his cabin for a celebratory plate of gabagool, one of the engineers came back with terrible news. The fire had completely destroyed the engine. The boat was now stuck in the middle of the ocean with no power. <laughs> Only this could have been avoided somehow. Oh wait, it could have? 
Well, we'll get to that later. 4,229 people were now lost at sea with no air conditioning, no hot food, no TV, and worst of all, no toilets. This was not good. Cruise ships are some of the most filthy, vile places on the entire planet, and that's when the toilets are working. So you can only imagine how bad this is gonna get. It didn't take long for shit to hit the fan. About an hour in, the toilets were already getting clogged, so the crew started handing out the infamous red hazard bags for people to poop in. And it was suggested that everyone should pee in the shower. As you probably know by now, the toilets are not flushing and it's gonna start causing a little bit of a problem in a short while. So we've come up with a plan. So folks, what we're gonna do is we're gonna deliver some red bags to all of the bathrooms on board, including the stateroom bathrooms, your cabin bathrooms. And if you do need to do a number two, we ask that you please do <laughs> deposit that into the red bags and then we're gonna put metal bins in the corridors on every deck on the ship. If you would be so kind as to drop them into their metal bins in the corridors, that would be fantastic. And if you do need to do a number one, everybody, to say filling up the toilet bowls, if you can do it in the um, shower. The lack of air conditioning was not helping things at all. Pretty soon, most of the ship was smelling like an Arby's dumpster on a hot summer day. A lot of people opted to move their mattresses out to the deck rather than sleeping inside with the stench. <laughs> By the second day, the food supply was running dangerously low. And you might be asking, how? There's so much food on these ships, how could they have run out in a day? Well, you gotta remember, 90% of this food is frozen slop, so without working freezers, it was just sitting there decomposing, which only added to the already horrendous smell. And if that wasn't bad enough, some people were actually hoarding food. They were hiding hamburgers and cereal in their rooms like animals. Luckily, another cruise ship, the Carnival Legend, came to the rescue and dropped off some much needed food and supplies. Good thing too, cause pretty sure these people were about six hours away from eating each other. Now, this was no gourmet food by any means. Unlike the delicious meals from today's sponsor, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first chef to consumer platform, meaning their meals are prepared by individual chefs instead of in a factory and they come straight to your door. All you gotta do is pop them in the microwave for a few minutes and you can enjoy a delicious meal. Look at all these meals they sent me. They even have different options for different diets like vegan, paleo, and gluten-free if you're into that. Today, I'm gonna go with the roasted chicken and creamy mushroom sauce from Chef Cedric Nicolas. And I gotta say, it's pretty delicious, okay? The mashed potatoes actually remind me of the ones your mom makes. Those schlub meals on the Carnival Triumph would be so jealous right now. Even Benny was enjoying it. You know, since me and the missus split up a few years back, I find that cooking wastes a lot of time. And I could be using that time to make more YouTube videos. So I would say for the amount of time saved, plus how scrumptious the food is, Cook Unity is definitely the move. And the nice thing about them is that the subscription is super flexible. You can pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. So go to cookunity.com slash Dantavius50 or click the link in the description below and use my code Dantavius50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals and try them out for yourself. Thanks, Cook Unity. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, that's right. The Carnival Legend dropped off food, but without working microwaves and freezers, they were limited to things like cold hot dogs and onion sandwiches. But that wasn't the bad part. The bad part was that people were forced to wait in line for hours to get food like they were in the Soviet Union or some shit. But hey, at least they weren't gonna start. Two more cruise ships would stop by that day and drop off more food, which pretty much solved their food shortages for the rest of the trip. But with one problem down, more kept arising. One passenger was in urgent need of dialysis, so the Coast Guard had to transport her to one of the other cruise ships so she could get to the hospital immediately. Which begs the question, why didn't they just transfer everyone to another ship and just be done with it? Well, it turns out it's not as easy as putting a board between two boats and having everyone walk across. You know, it was just scary the way they put me down. Uh, they put me in, in a stair rope, and um, the Coast Guard said that don't worry about it, that they would catch me and, and you know, they were going to hold me back and they did. And then they transferred me to the bigger boat and, you know. These uh, ship to ship transfers are actually pretty risky and Carnival would rather have 4,000 pissed off people rather than one dead one. So for now, they were pretty much stuck on the Triumph with no way out. And not only did people have to stand in line for food, but also to charge their devices. 
this was going to be a massive problem. With no way to watch Family Guy on their phones and tablets, the mood on the boat started to change. Everyone was starting to get a little bit more rowdy, a little bit more raucous. And the crew was doing everything in their power to try to keep people distracted from the reality that they were living in. And hey guys, just because we're stuck in the middle of the ocean with, you know, no working toilets, doesn't mean we can't have some fun, all right? <laughs> but it wasn't enough. And the ship's comedian was so bad that it was just making people more irritated. Fuck some and cookie, what are you talking about? It's like a chocolate chip with sauce all over it? What are you talking about? What are you Management had to find a way to calm down the growing frustration or they might have a mutiny on their hands. So someone came up with the most brilliant idea ever. Free booze! An open bar was established on the Lido deck and believe me when I say, people took advantage. It took only about five minutes for the crew to realize how tremendously stupid their idea was. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been on a cruise or not, and if you haven't, you're lucky to not have encountered a specific group of individuals who I call cruise people. And I use the term people lightly because they're basically animals. They shouldn't even be allowed to live in society, okay? We should just put them all on cruise ships and then sink them. So you have a bunch of agitated, psychotic cruise people who haven't been able to watch Family Guy for two days, and now they're absolutely plastered, okay? This was a recipe for disaster. Fights were breaking out, people were throwing furniture, they were peeing in the pool. According to one crew member, a few hours after the open bar, there was a blackout for 15 minutes. We had panic attacks, a fight, a person threatening to jump overboard. It got loud, didn't open the bars again. Yeah, the open bar didn't even last two hours before they cut that shit off and no more alcohol was served for the entire rest of the trip. But hey, it wasn't all bad news. That day, Jen made an announcement that a tugboat was on its way to tow the Triumph to the nearest port. And now we're all waiting for the tugboats that were supposed to be here at noon today. The captain has just advised me that the tugboats will be here slightly delayed at about three o'clock. I think it's to do with the fact that we've drifted away so far away in the wind. On the third day, things were starting to look up. The engineers were able to restore some more power to the ship, which gave them more working toilets. Not a lot, you know, like, like five. There were five working toilets for the entire ship of 4,000 people. So you had two options. Number one, wait in line for three hours to use the filthiest, most disgusting toilet imaginable. Or number two, go in a bag. Personally, I would have opted for number two. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that along with the propulsion systems and the power, the engine fire also knocked out the ship's stabilizers, which was slowly causing it to tilt. By day three, it was listing at a five degree angle, which I know it doesn't sound too bad, but it was enough to flood the lower decks with pee pee. Like the carpets were literally soaked in urine. Now the water drains out and it's all squishy all over the floor. There's our toilet, pee pot, trash can with a trash bag. And then it goes under there and we're listing this way. So it goes all the way up and it'll all be soaking onto the porch soon. Hmm. Yeah, you can see it in the video. This is awesome. Watch it go down the stairs. No. Turns out that telling people to pee in the shower on a boat with no plumbing was not the best idea. The stench had now spread through the entire ship. Anyone who didn't have a balcony moved up to the poop deck and formed a tent city. It was like a cleaner version of downtown LA. Meanwhile, the tugboats were now pulling the boat to land. Slowly, but there was a change of plans. By the time the tugboat arrived, the ship had drifted so far north that it was now closer to Mobile, Alabama than Progresso. So the Coast Guard decided to tow the Triumph there instead. Everyone on board was horrified. The only thing worse than being stuck on a boat caked in human shit is being in Mobile, Alabama. I, I truly can't think of anything worse than that. Now, up to this point, Carnival Corporate had stayed silent about the situation, but God damn it, someone had to say something. The Carnival CEO stepped up and made a public statement. I think it's very important that I apologize to our guests and to their families that have been affected by this very difficult situation. Meanwhile, Carnival's owner chose to show solidarity by attending a Miami Heat game. The boat was supposed to arrive in port today. But luckily it didn't or else this video would be way too short. The current was now going against the boat which really slowed things down and the ship was moving at about 2 miles an hour and there was still over 100 miles left. But hey, 
On the bright side, they were over halfway there. At around noon, a Coast Guard helicopter landed on the boat and delivered a much needed generator. Why they couldn't have done this earlier, I have no idea. But the generator was able to restore enough power to get two of the elevators running, along with most of the toilets. And to the relief of the passengers, they now had Wi-Fi. The mood improved considerably once people were able to watch funny Family Guy compilations on YouTube again. The boat was so close to Alabama they could practically smell the incest. The captain originally predicted that they would dock sometime in the early afternoon, but they hit another snag on the way. See, the tugboat's tow line broke, which tacked on another few hours to their trip. With the Wi-Fi restored, people on board were starting to realize how big of a news story their situation was. CNN was basically covering it 24 hours a day, nonstop, drawing criticism from people like Jon Stewart. CNN has been on the case, for some reason giving this boat crisis wall to covered wall coverage. <laughs> I think I should mention a lot of people, including passengers, were saying that the media hype was overblown and the situation really wasn't as bad as they were making it out to be. One survivor said, I saw a few people crying, but honestly, without the dirtiness, it wouldn't be too bad. It was like camping on a cruise ship. You know, I thought this comment was funny because going on a cruise is basically the exact opposite of camping. But there's no doubt that the media definitely sensationalized this story. Some of the passengers who spoke to the press were even accused of exaggerating their stories to get on the news or to cash in on that sweet, sweet class action lawsuit. Nevertheless, it was an absolute PR disaster for Carnival. So corporate had to do some serious damage control before the boat docked. They offered everyone on board a full refund, $500, a credit towards a future cruise, and a Long John Silver's gift card. Most people were happy with these concessions, but not everybody. We'll, we'll get to that a little bit later though. At 9.20 PM, the Carnival Triumph docked in Mobile, Alabama. It was finally over. Carnival CEO was the first on the scene and personally apologized to the passengers and crew. And I want to apologize again for subjecting our guests to that. But he wasn't alone, obviously. There were dozens of news crews chomping at the bit to get the juicy scoop on the poop crews. Some passengers were eager to be on TV. Most just wanted to get the fuck out of there and go to sleep. And you would think that Carnival would book them hotels right there in Mobile, but no. They inexplicably put everyone on buses to go to New Orleans, which was three hours away. Oh, and get this, on the way there, one of the buses broke down, leaving everyone on board stranded again. Out of habit, they immediately started shitting in bags. It was a disgusting scene. Eventually, everyone made it to the hotel in one piece, but that wasn't the end of the drama with the Carnival Triumph. While it was docked in Mobile's port for repairs, strong winds caused it to break free and drift across the shipyard. It eventually crashed into another ship, causing one dock worker to lose his life in the process. Now, it should come as no surprise that a lot of people tried to sue Carnival for this fiasco, but uh, they had no case whatsoever because apparently mother suckers didn't read the fine print. Before you step foot on that cruise ship, you basically have to sign your life away. Whatever happens on that boat stays on the boat. <laughs> you can't do shit about it. These passengers have no right to sue because Carnival's attorneys say when you buy your ticket, the ticket contract makes absolutely no guarantee for safe passage, a seaworthy vessel, adequate and wholesome food, and sanitary and safe living conditions. Carnival, because of that, is trying to get the suit tossed. So when it was all said and done, none of the lawsuits went anywhere. They were shit out of luck. Carnival said that the entire thing was an unavoidable accident. Was it though? Because according to Carnival's own documents, diesel generator number six, the very same generator that caused all these issues, was overdue for an inspection for over a year. And it gets worse, two of the generators weren't even working at all. If those two generators had been functioning, this whole situation could have been avoided. Not to mention, this wasn't the first time Carnival had problems with broken fuel lines causing engine fires. Just one year before the Triumph, Carnival's Costa Allegra had a similar problem where a broken fuel line caused the fire and left 1,000 people stranded for three days. And in 2010, it happened again on the Carnival Splendor. In fact, this was the ninth incident in two years. One of Carnival's executives went on CNN and claimed that they were totally in compliance with the rules and regulations of the sea. But 
Here's a dirty secret about the cruise industry. Their regulations ain't worth shit. Carnival and every other American cruise company aren't even technically based in America. The cruise ships themselves are flagged in places like the Bahamas to avoid taxes. So they're not really held to the same level of scrutiny as something like the FAA. Remember, the ship took off knowing that two generators didn't work. That's like a plane taking off with only one engine. Would that ever be allowed? I sure hope not. And you would think that this whole debacle would be a massive hit to Carnival, but the following year they had their most successful year ever, which just proves the saying, all publicity is good publicity. The Carnival Triumph continues to sail to this very day under its new name, the Carnival Sunrise.